I'm either incredibly brave or incredibly stupid. I just painted the doors yesterday, I'm going to put them on now. So they're not going to be very hard. Well, at least the paint's going to be very hard. So... Right! Now, yeah. grab that handle. How about no? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's pretty close. Can you do this with my cupboard? Because like covered. The, yep, my door. <laughs> the door oh, that's right, it's naked, isn't it? Hang on, I'm just gonna... So I can put the paint together. Yeah, that's far too high. I've just got to watch, because this is going to be soft as butter and I don't want to scratch it. What I might do, I might get you to hold this. While I set the doors up, these are um, star washers and they're a lock washer. And what will happen is I'll scratch the paint. So I might put a 5 16 flat washer under there. Tighten me up, get it lined up, and then I'll take them out and lift them up one by one. So what I need you to do, come here, hold that door frame, and don't let it move. So I've got a box of 5 16 flat washers, I've just stuck one under each of these. Um, you can see the paint scratches really easily on these hinges, but it's just a... I've just got to be so careful on it. Scratch it. I'm just going to sort of nip them down. So I can see where. Let go of it. It would suck if it was the front door. <laughs> because what we've got to do, we've got a towel there just to stop the bottom edge getting scratched. What we've got to do is we've got to gap the back door off the rear guard. Jeez, I'm getting nervous. Whoa. Oh shit, it's just a detent, that's cool. Especially with that stiff. Oh, I'm hanging on to it. Oh, okay. Now, but I'm friggin' nervous because this door is as soft as shit on a warm day. So, as a first guess, that is not bad. Yeah. I probably need to go up a tiny bit. It makes it I think. Old. I think what we need to do is I'm going to loosen these and I need to move this hinge forward about a millimetre. And I reckon... I'll get it pretty much there, although that gap there looks a little bit too far open. You should write a book. By moving that forward, I reckon that'll help. A book? I don't know enough. I'm not a panel beater. I'm not a painter. I'm a handyman. Now, that's got a dent in it, which I haven't seen, which is a real pain in the ass. What I want you to do... Oh, yeah. I've just put a little tiny bit... I just said something crude and he's laughing because I said something crude when the thing was off. <laughs> I've just put a bit of pressure underneath the jack there so when I take loosen these off it should sort of move forward to use the Julia Gillard term which I think it just did I've got no idea <laughs> I won't say um, I can touch these up I can brush touch those um, so we'll, we'll, no, we'll stick it in and see how this looks I'm just being ultra careful I don't want to scratch anything because the paint I only put the paint down last night, and I've already made a, a couple of mistakes too. I have to tell you something that's really, really funny. Don't tell me yet. It is. Now, it's, it's not right. rude. Hang funny. on a minute. That's out. There's a, there's a dent there. I didn't see. I don't know how I've missed this, but this is why I'm saving so much money, because I'm doing it myself, so I'm not a professional, but I've done my best. That can be lowered a tiny, tiny, tiny bit but minimally because it's such a fine amount out. So I might pack that, I might put a bone under there, just to, not that sort of bone, I might put a, <laughs> a bone under here, which is about five millimeters thick, and that will marry that up. But these two points here aren't too bad. Okay, I've got these gaps fairly even, all down here, and these, these two apexes are sort of in line there. The thing that worries me though, is this one here. It's really wide at the bottom, and it's narrow at the top. So I might have to take that under advisement, because I'm not really sure what the deal of that is. The rest of it looks all right. I have to put some pads in. There's some little doorstop rubbers that have to go in, just so I can't close too far and scratch and whatnot. But this here, this is an issue, and I need to figure out what's going on there. Well, this is a pain in the neck. This gap here looks good, but this looks rubbish in here. And yet these are a bit out. Oh no, they're not too bad. Looks like the door's got to do that. So drop it at the front, but then I'm having trouble with the frame up here, contacting. Trouble is I don't remember, really, how good or bad the gaps were before I pulled it apart. 
but I deliberately didn't take the front hinge or well, the hinges off the doors when I painted them, which was a bit dodgy, but I wanted to leave them because I realised it would be difficult to line the gaps up. But at the moment, she's looking pretty, pretty rubbish. So I've sort of relaxed all the hinge bolts in here and here, sort of there and there, just so I can fiddle around with the door. I've got the catch in, so it's sort of hung up on that part there, but it just doesn't seem to... I just don't remember how good or bad they were before. I can fix up some of that with the striker height. But that's looking a bit high now. But, um... It's awfully close there. If I bring that out... On the EA Falcons, we used to stick our knee against them and pull the frames out to try and give me additional clearance, and I might have to do that, or at least close it on a bit of plastic to try and bring this out, this frame here, because it's touching there. I'll just see what that, with it, what that brings us, you know. It might not do anything, and it might do a lot, I'm not sure. I might lower, I might lower that height of that striker now, to see where that brings us. By having all the hinges loose, but sort of not too loose, you can sort of dial up the gap you want by sort of shifting the door. But it's, as long as we get the striker height level, that doesn't look all that bad from this side now. The trouble is it looks good there, it looks good there, but it's a bit big there. So it needs to almost go back. At the end of the day, the bodywork on this car doesn't look nearly as good as I hoped it would. And it's a bit disappointing in some areas because I found things that I didn't see. That's cool. That's pretty cool. That's sitting out a bit. That I don't like. Um, and that bottom one, I want to close that bottom up a bit. Which means it might kick that out. make this worse if I tried. This is the reason people go to panel shops. And the reason why panel work is so expensive because it's so difficult to line up. Given that this car wasn't made with that guard on that door, nothing fits. And I should have mopped it up beforehand to make sure all the gaps were fine. This is the guard that the rust repair section put in. It's too high there, and it's too low down here. Now I can pull that in, but it just doesn't look consistent. That line there's right, this one's too high. And that is just ridiculous. Look at it. So this guard, I, put, I had a, a fella put a rust repair section in, but I don't know if he's warped it or or what, the guard's actually longer than it was in terms of its depth. So, I'm in a jam. I don't really know what to do. So I'm still mucking around with doors. I've, I've fixed up this gap here. It's still not that great there, but it's much, much better in this area down here, the main part you see. Uh, just by dropping it down a tiny bit, um, it hasn't affected there, so that's all good. So I'm happy with those gaps down there. I'm happy with these ones down here. This is disastrous. Um, now I can push that forward. That's not a problem. And I was worried about this. This is sitting well up and I've had a look in. I've got to figure out how to open the door now. And it's my fault because when I made up, I don't know if we can see in here, right under there, the framework of the guard, is that better there? He's sitting on that new um, guttering that I made, this, this part down here. I've made it too high, whoops, made it too high, so I'm going to have to grind that down, um, and that'll bring that down, I need that down about an eighth of an inch, um, and then it can sort of be secured in there and it'll all look pretty good, but that's the reason, I was a bit worried about it, um, and that'll bring this right down, because at the moment that's far too proud, you can see there. First rubbers we put in these door bump stops, they just cushion the door as it closes, I've got this one up here, 
They can be reasonably tricky to put in because they're tight, but you can pretty much lubricate them with anything. Silicon lube is probably the best thing. Washing detergents and other things. I'm just putting a little bit of VAS on. I had a can of silicon lube and I gave it to a guy. I want to sold a Mercedes Benz a couple of years ago and the windows were a bit sticky, so I just sort of chucked the can at him, but I regretted it and never got around to buying another can. So, um, they're a split seal, a split bush. These ones don't, this is probably a back one, actually. I might have these in wrong. But anyway, for the purpose of demonstration, you just push this side in first and it'll go into that oh, slot. Put it on when you get it on the car, not with the door on trestles, because you've got to push reasonably hard to get it in. I think that's in there. And now I'll just cushion the door. Beautiful. Hear that? Haha. <laughs> Not really into drugs, but I'm just going to make our gloves, but it doesn't matter. I'll just stop me getting this grease. This is HTB, high temperature bearing grease. I'm just going to whack some into this syringe. There we go. Whoops. That's good. Excellent. Now these catches have all been. Um, Replated and they look absolutely lovely and we've got to lubricate them now. I'm not really sure uh, What the best lubrication for them is but one bloke suggested dry lube, which is like on a stick It's a waxy sort of substance on a stick um, Does go a bit liquidy with heat, but it is a very very good lubricant and suitable for this too I would think uh, we used to use it on fan belts in the 80s at Ford We just run it on the belt and it stopped the squeaking and That's the reason I've sort of filled this syringe up with with high temperature bearing grease and high temperature bearing grease won't run um, so it's just a matter of sort of poking the nozzle into areas like this and the grease will expand or at least run out um, and just basically lubricating contact areas um, you can sort of squeeze them with the finger if you prefer but I don't know I might go down this road and just see what happens and um, this way it might be a little bit tidier not too sure I've not done this like this before but um, the idea is, and the, the problem with grease I should say, is that grease has a tendency to catch dirt. And that's why sunroofs, you don't use grease on a sunroof, you're supposed to use um, silicon lube. But as I said, like an idiot, I had silicon lube and I gave it away and never got around to getting any more, so I probably should. So I'll, I'll just go around this and make sure it's all lubricated and, and looking good. Now we've got that sort of all lubricated and moving nice and smoothly, we can put it back in the car and we don't secure it with its right screws which I had plated ages ago all the plating I had done in this car was a long time ago now but um, so it's good because you get to empty out a box full of crap and watch your car sort of come to fruition so to speak but, but you get the point we stick it in and we try it out that's pretty easy here we go, lights are too good. So that's the first part of the door um, being assembled. And that should, oops, pull that out of the way. Beautiful, oops. Yeti. Excellent. So I've got three doors on the car now, um, and it's sort of wrapped it again, because I've got to do more body work on these guards. Uh, that's the the um, channeling I made. It's under the plastic. You can't really see it. I've sort of marked. Now I've got a cut along here down about an eighth of an inch, um, which is an issue because I that's one piece and it's folded at the top to stop water getting in. So I'll have to sort of cut it and then uh, and sort of seal the top of it and repaint that part there, just so the guard can sit down because it's sitting proud up here. If you remember, by about an eighth of an inch. The reason I haven't done the driver's door yet. It's absolutely untouched. Firstly, I ran out of paint stripper, so I, I need more paint stripper for that door, um, the bonnet, and also the boot over there. But it's got a, it's got an issue down here in that that weld's all sort of come and done down there. You can see it's sort of flapping around in the breeze there, so it's, it's got to be welded there as well. Um, and also, I need to put a rebuild kit through this bottom hinge. That bottom hinge is a bit, a bit knackered and a bit floppy. It's all sort of had it, so that needs rebuilding. And once I get that, I can sort of hook into this door as well. I'm not able to get the, uh, the guards without the doors on. Now, I had all these door locks plated a long time ago, quite a long time ago, and we need to sort of fiddle around with them to get them into tip-top condition. They look good, but they're not yet. 
Um, of course, this has to be brought over a bit. But one of the things that concerns me is this linkage here and this pin. Now, if I pull that over, you can see how much slack's there, and it's quite bad. You can see the pressure it puts it under. It's absolutely flogged out. If I can hold that up, you can see just in here, it's just about to break that part off there just through the constant action of the door being opened like that. So you can see the two door um, replacement linkages, which are hard, and then of course the pins. And this one has to be drilled out and these new ones sort of burred over at the top. So we'll do that now. Just to be careful I don't bend or break anything. I'm just gonna punch it there. Straight away, what's the other side? Straight away we can see the difference here. It should look like that. And it looks like that. It's pretty bad, isn't it? So we'll set about putting that in now. And there we have it. We put the new part in. We haven't got these manky old chewed out parts anymore. We've got a nice new one moves beautifully and there's not much slack, just a normal amount. So front guards are painted on the outside and on the inside. Might stick a bit of dead now under the top part. Well you can see I haven't finished gapping yet and these are all still a little bit too uh, soft to colour sand and buff. The roof and the rear quarters are done the doors I can do reasonably soon, probably in a fortnight. I'm going to wait about another three weeks to do these. These don't look that great, but uh, when it's done, it should look fairly presentable. I want to talk a little bit about money. I've got my XW Bible here, and it's got every bit of work. Now, this isn't the, the latest edition. It's on the computer, and uh, there's pages and pages of work. I've sort of taken a diary and color-coded expenditure, but this is just all your receipts and bits of work and of course on the front there's a photo of what the thing looked like when I got it. But the financial breakdown has been uh, quite expensive. Now all told the car owes $22,420.42 minus $18.87 for bits and pieces I sold off the original car. Now that means a net expenditure of $20,532. Now that, the bodywork alone, and that includes all the paint stripper, uh, rust repairs, new floors, the new bonnet, left hand front guard, scuttle, the engine cross member with the uh, GT type reinforcement, all the thinners, high fill paint, um, all the products, and there's about three litres of poor 15 and 100 bucks a litre, has all come to 2,413. The, uh, there's about, another extra, about an extra $250 that I need to uh, spend. I've got to get another litre of paint just front of the bonnet and under the boot and some paint stripper I've run out of that, that sort of thing. So it's about another 250 bucks to spend there. The interior doesn't look very inviting at the moment because there's not much in there. And so far I've spent a bit of money on a Rico dash, uh, new seat belt, door trim, um, an interior trim kit, rear seat with the fold down armrest, the dicky seat for the front, dash pad and so forth. Spent $4,109, um, still have to buy headlining and front seats, the bucket seats. The brake upgrade, now everything in the brakes has been changed. The only thing that's original are the, the rear drums which I could machine. There was enough meat there to machine them. Um, and of course I've changed it from a, a four-wheel drum to a power-assisted disc with the XY PBR booster. New master cylinder, new lines, new discs, um, new everything. The whole brake upgrade's been done, that was $1,404. Steering and suspension, which was entire new front suspension, springs, shockers, you name it, steering box uh, as well, which was a second hand one. I do have to spend extra on the rear springs are gonna need to be reset, and of course it needs um, rear shock absorbers. But so far, steering and suspension has been $1,064. Electrical, I've spent $701. Um, Brand new pair of XW horns, haven't put them on yet. Um, starter solenoid, starter motor, the clapper. Uh, mods to the wiring loom, new tail light on the left hand side, or a second hand one, new tail light lenses, indicator lenses and so forth. That was $701. 
And I'm estimating, worst case scenario, about $8,000 left to spend, which is a lot of money. Um, need the, the screens put in, the new front screen, uh, headlining, tyres, exhaust, front seats, extra paint materials, heater core, uh, just get that checked out, a tail shaft, all rubbers and all that sort of stuff for the doors. So we're not out of the woods yet, but it's very, very, uh, well, it's, it's fairly close. The only thing that's going to hold me up now in terms of speed uh, are financial constraints. Finally, the total engine cost, and the engine, the only thing I used off the original engine was the bare block, the bare cylinder heads, the crankshaft, uh, and uh, connecting rods, that's about it. This uh, engine, I did change the compression height of it by using new flat top pistons, and that was a fair bit of calculation and so forth, clearance measuring and all that sort of stuff. Um, but brand new Lanetti camshaft, brand new Lanetti um, valve springs, and, uh, and lifters, and uh, a lot of stuff, alloy water pump, New Cleveland 77 bearings, um, all sorts of bits and pieces, new valves, and well, a lot of them are new valves, not all of them. A lot of uh, expense on that, or a lot of work on the on the engine. So that was $3,094, or $3,095. So uh, restoring a car is never a very cheap option. The um, the costs do mount up, of course, and they do mount up to, to something quite considerable. When I bought this car, the first, uh, I've got a specific reason for building it, but the first um, idea I had was to leave it a six cylinder and restore it as a Falcon 500. And I thought it sort of thought it'd be around 15,000 finished, including purchase price. And the moment I wanted to change it to a V8 and do a Fairmont type interior, I figured it'd be about another 10,000. So I sort of uh, thought about $25,000 to finish the car. Uh, when I sat down and did the calculations, it sort of blew out to about 28, which isn't that much really, because when you think about it, my brother's Mustang, just the bodywork and painting alone, is $36,000. Now that's done at one of Melbourne's finest car restoration places, and they send a lot of their, their work overseas to overseas collectors, so they're very high end, but of course you get what you pay for. His car's going to look a hell of a lot better than this one. So the next video, there's all we kind of sanded, but that door, I'll show you this door. This door will be finished, I've got to, I've got to weld that. Uh, we'll get somebody to help me do it, and I've got to weld this too, that's got a crack in there. Of course the, the uh, hinge needs to be rebuilt, but I'm not going to show, I'm not going to show that, I'm just going to fix it and strip it and paint it and all this sort of stuff. I will show a bit of the hinge being um, rebuilt, I've ordered a, uh, a hinge rebuilding kit. So in the next video that door will be painted and sitting on the car, and the, um, and the gaps will be done on both sides. So then I can concentrate on sort of fitting out the front, and so I want to do that on the next video and uh, also fitting out the doors. We need to put um, rubbers in and quarter windows in and all this sort of stuff. So the next video will be in a little while, it won't be just yet, but um, hopefully we can sort of st see the car start to really, really make shape. Uh, and again, I'm sorry it's taking so long, there's just so many bits and pieces that, um, that are proving to be a little bit troublesome, but at the end of the day, I've not had any stress with it and uh, I'm really enjoying it. So I hope you are too, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.